Great to see you here again. My name is Luc de Custer, founder of the Custer Academy, and I'm offering you another video, this time about the greatest common divisor and, of course, the Euclid algorithm. But before we start, please click on the subscribe button, click on the bell, so that when every time we have a new video, YouTube will send you a message. The greatest common divider is also called the greatest common factor. is a very important algorithm, the Euclid algorithm, that we are going to use. But first, let's have a look what is the greatest common divisor. Now, the greatest common divisor is the largest integer that is divisor for two integers. And we have to find it. We can find it in different ways. Let's start with the example how we can do this the classical way. Let's say we want to find the greatest common divisor of two numbers 36 and 16. Now the classical method is by factorizing. So when we factorize 36 we can say that 36 is equal to 1 of course. 1 is not a prime number but let's put 1 here times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. Basically, how many divisors we have for 36? We have 1, we have 2, we have 4, we have 12, a 6, 12, and of course 36. The same thing we can do for 16. So 16 factorized is 1 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, we will write this as 2 to the 4th power, while we can write this as 2 to the 4th uh, second power, 2 multiplied with 3 to the 2nd power. The divisors for 16 are 1, 2, 4, 8, and 16. Now, when we look at those two numbers, we can see immediately that the greatest number, the largest number that divides both of them is in fact 4. So the greatest common divisor for 36 and 16 is equal to 4. Now, this can take a lot of time, but basically this is the classical way to find it. We factorize the numbers, we find the largest number. But let's have a look at some other examples. Let's say the greatest common divisor from two numbers, 15 and 7. Now, let's look at the divisors of 15. 15, then we have 1, 3, 5 and 15. And the second one, we have 7. So we have the divisors 1 and 7. And 7 is a special number. You remember 7 is a prime number. So we call this a prime number. It's of the list of primes. And in this case, the greatest common divisor is 1. So in this case, 1 is the largest common divisor. And it's logical because a prime number can only be divided by 1 and by itself. This is logical for prime numbers, but let's also look at another example, the GCD of two numbers, for example, 15 and 34. So when I look at 15, I say 15 is 1. Then we have 3, 5 and 15. And for 34, we have 2. Then we have 2, which gives 17, and 17. And 17 is also a prime. Of course, we also have 34 here. Now, here we see that although both numbers are not prime numbers, because I have the divisors, I can write 15 as 3 times 5. 
and this is 2 times 17, but I see that also their GCD is equal to 1. And this is a special case and it leads to a definition where we say that those, those two numbers are what we call a relatively prime. Once we have numbers, integers, even when they're not prime numbers and their GCD is equal to 1, we call them relatively prime. And we will be using that property later when we are going to look at modular arithmetic. And this is also an important element when we are going to do the, let's say, the Euclidean algorithm, we will find all those factors. We will find the GCD and later when we do the backward pass, we can write the GCD as a linear combination of the two numbers. And the coefficient that those two numbers will have, we call the Bezout coefficients. But let's first have a look at a practical explanation, a very visual explanation of the Euclid algorithm. The easiest representation and the explanation of the Euclid algorithm is to draw a rectangle. We're going to look at the GCD here of the two numbers 21 and 43. Now based on this we can say we have a rectangle with height 21 and a width of 43. What we're going to do is to split it up. We take parts of 21. So we have one part here. This is 21 times 21. And we have another one. We have 43. So we can have 2 times the 21. which is also 21 times 21. And what remains here is 1. Okay, this is a very simple example. And what we find here is that the remaining, the new rectangle that we have is 1 by 21. Now, it's easy to find here because we can only split this up in 1. And we find here the 1 21 parts of one size one, which gives us in this case that the GCD is equal to one. Now, basically we're going to use this algorithm to find what we are doing here. So what did Euclid do? Let's put it in here in the middle. So he said 43 is 2 times 21 plus 1. So basically, we have the last one here, the 21, and now we have a new rectangle, which is 21, is 21 times 1 plus 0. So basically, we go back once we reach 0. This is the GCD. Now, there are two ways to look at this algorithm. This is the easiest way that we do. The other way is we say 43 minus 21 is in fact 22. And now we subtract again from 22. 21 is equal to 1. And 1 minus 1, or we do the 21, is equal to 0. So basically, again, we find the different ways here. Now, they both have the same result. This was the original way Euclid did it. Every time he subtracted 21, 21, until he found a smaller number and then he was subtracting the other numbers again. Now, this takes a lot more time. In this easy case, it's very quickly. But when we use the other formula. We will look at that later. We will see that this is a lot faster. So basically, the Euclidean algorithm can be improved and we are going to do the calculations step by step for different solutions.
Let's now apply the Euclidean algorithm. The original and the improved. So we start with 36 minus 13 is 23. We take again 23 is still larger than 13. So I say 23 and I put it under here. 23 minus 13 is equal to 10. And now we see 10 is smaller than 13. So now we continue with 13. 13 minus 10 is equal to 3. We continue again with 10. 10 minus 3 is 7. 7 minus 3 is 4. 4 minus 3 is 1. And 1 minus 1 equals to 0. So basically we find here that the GCD is equal to 1. So that's the easy way to calculate it. We find the zero, then the previous step gives us the GCD. Now let's have a look at a better way to do this. Let's say 36 we can write as 2 times 13 plus 10. The remainder is 10. So I have 26 plus 10 is 36. Now I take the number here 13. I can write this as 1 times 10 plus 3. And now I can say 10 is 3 times 3 plus 1. And we can say 3 is 3 times 1. So basically plus the remainder 0. So this is the GCD. is the same that we get. Now what's the conclusion here? You see the number of steps here is a lot more than the way we do it in the improved algorithm. And in some cases it can be a very big difference like we will see in the next example. This example is a little bit more complicated and you will see immediately why this method is better than the original subtraction method. So we have 4765 is in fact three times 1359 plus 688. Now we take 1359 and we see how many times it goes in 688 and that's one time plus a remainder of 671. Then we say 688 is 1 times 671 plus 17. And here you will see where's the difference because here it's still quite okay. We have three calculations, three subtractions here. But when I see 671, this is equal to 39 times 17 plus a remainder of 8. And the last one, 17, is 2 times 8 plus 1. And the final one is in fact 8 is 8 times 1 plus 0. So we find here that the GCD is equal to 1. So both of them are relatively prime. But what I wanted to show you here we would have 39 subtractions. And it's clear that this way to complete the algorithm is a lot more efficient and less time consuming than the previous method. But there is still another way to resolve this problem. The last way to do this is using modular arithmetic. So what we can say is 4765 modulus 1359, that's equal to 688. Now we take 1359 modulus 688 is 671. Now we take 688 modulus 671, that's equal to 17. And then we have 671 
modulus 17, which gives us 8, and 17 modulus 8 is 1, and 8 modulus 1 is 0. And basically in the step here, the step before where we find 0, gives us the GCD. So what is important to see? When we look at this, we have six steps. When we look at the classical algorithm, like Euclid defined it with the subtraction, we find 54 steps. So that's basically nine times more. And you see that when we look at algorithms, it's very important to reduce the number of calculations. The Euclidean algorithm using the previous method or the modular division, we have in fact a very fast way to find the greatest common divisor. So that's what I wanted to say about the greatest common divisor or the greatest common factor, what it means, how we can calculate it, and how the Euclid algorithm can be used to improve the time complexity or reduce the number of calculations to find the GCD. So that was it about this video. Do not forget, in the text below, you will find links to our courses and coupons that will give you a very good discount. Anyway, when you, before leaving, I ask you, please subscribe to our channel Click on the bell button so every time we have a new video, YouTube will inform you about it. Thank you very much and bye-bye.